Good day, everyone, and good Monday morning to you. Got Michael Wardian fresh back from the Spartan Games. Going to bring you this interview here in a moment. Uh, it's a longer interview that I'm going to put on the podcast. We talked for about an hour in total, uh, so check out the podcast for that. But I wanted to go ahead and bring the Spartan Games talk to you right here on YouTube as we've been enjoying so many of these over the last several days. Uh, you can go back on our channel and see all the great chats we've had with Ryan and with Rhea and with a bunch of other athletes. Uh, but let's get to Mr. Wardian. Away we go. We were all very curious about who they were getting for this event, and they were being very tight-lipped about the names. And when I heard your name, I thought, well, yeah, of course, Mike can't say no to a challenge. Like, you say, hey, Mike, come do this crazy thing. He's going to go, okay. <laughs> right? Yeah, totally. I, yeah, man. I totally I, – uh, I was really honored they uh, gave me the opportunity. It was – it was a lot of fun. Um, it was, it was, it was definitely, uh, you know, much outside of, you know, what I normally do. And so it was, it was fun to, you know, challenge myself in that way. Yeah. Because the last time I had interviewed you was for, uh, Barkley 2018. Did you, did you go back in 2019? I can't remember. Uh, I think I may have gone in 2017 and 2018. I don't think I went in 2019 because I just run across um, Israel. And so it didn't seem like a, if you're, if you're not ready to, to throw down, you know, it's not, a, it's, there's no reason to go. Right. And then earlier this year, when I had put my uh, ultravirus together, you were one of the first people I reached out to. And I really appreciate you uh, saying yes to that. Um, and that was a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Uh, and now uh, th people have gone virtual crazy. I thought you, I saw you supporting a whole bunch of different ones over the last several months. Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, I even have like my own challenge going on right now with um, Old Dominion Racing. We've got a, a thing where you can run across the country. It's uh, based on the Cannonball Run movie, you know, so it's kind of cool. You run from New York to um, the West Coast and, and so that's, I think, a good challenge for people. And hopefully we'll have some more of those coming up. Um, yeah, I think it's a great way to keep people motivated. It's, you know, it's, it's hard to find something to do in real life right now. And having virtual challenge, I think, is a, is a great way to, you know, stay after it. I'm a, I'm a fan of the Cannonball Run movies. You, me too, man. Those are super, super cool. Like, I think a lot of people might not, uh, you know, remember those, but, but they are great. Yeah, if you're like mid forties or younger then I'm guessing you, you, you saw a lot of Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise on like HBO when you were growing up. Uh, yeah. If you had friends that had access, man, it was like, it wasn't what, like it was now, you know, you had to have like a, you know, a good friend that had, um, you know, had access and, you know, you could stay up past nine o'clock, but yeah. Are, are you sitting like a particular way for your, uh, your PFT? I'm not there? sitting right now. Right. Well, I was trying to sit, but I can't sit. So I'm, uh, I'm on my knees right now. I spent the whole day working like this. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I had a bunch of work I needed to catch up on because, you know, being out a little bit last week and then, uh, we spent two days driving to Tennessee to hopefully take part in the, um, the Biggs backyard ultra, but, um, you know, the car ride was a little bit too much for me after, um, you know, after getting a little bit tweaked in my piriformis and I thought I could heal up and ended up uh, in the ER instead. And so, um, got, got to drive 12 hours to Tennessee, spend about eight hours there and drive 12 hours home. So, um, you know, definitely not the way I was hoping to spend the weekend. That is, uh, that's brutal. Well, tell me how, <laughs> yeah. how, <laughs> when yeah you... that, that wasn't that wasn't the idea man i was supposed to still be running man so i'm i feel terrible I, you know i was hoping to be part of team usa and competing against all the other teams in the world and um you know i got to deliver some cookies to laz and the rest of the team and uh, my wife had made homemade cookies for everyone and uh we dropped those off and i said sorry i um you know i'm i busted myself up and you know hopefully i can uh, try to contribute in the future. So when did they contact you about this, the Spartan games? When, when were you first 
notified? Um, it wasn't, it wasn't a lot of pre-advice on it. You know, it was, um, it was pretty, pretty quick. I mean, maybe a week and a half, two weeks beforehand. And, you know, it was pretty generic, like, Hey, you want to come and run around in the woods for a couple of days and, um, you know, compete against these other people. And they didn't tell you <laughs> who the other people were, or, you know, it's just that, you know, there'd be some other people. And, uh, I was like, okay, sure. I just have some stuff due on Tuesday. I think that's what I told, told the Spartan stuff. Um, the Spartan, you know, people in charge was like, Hey, I got some work as long as there's Wi-Fi and I can do some work, then yeah, I'm, I'm down. And you had no idea what the events were going to be. Not really. I only knew that there was going to be, um, yeah, not really. It was pretty generic. They were like, do you know how to swim? I was like, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, can you ride a mountain bike? I was like, mm, kind of. And, uh, you know, like, I think there's, there's different levels of, you know, um, skill, uh, at, at most of the things. And so, um, you know, I, I feel like I, I have, you know, pretty, I'm pretty well-rounded, but definitely not an expert in, in a lot of things. When you showed up and you saw some of the bigger dudes or even bigger gals, <laughs> were you like, oh, I'm, I'm probably going to be in a lot of pain later on? Uh, yeah, I, to I totally was, uh, I was totally impressed with the, the amount of diversity they got. It was really cool. You know, there were CrossFitters, there were um OCR champions there were you know other runners there were um Olympians um you know triathletes um off-road triathletes like Josiah um so yeah it was it was a it was a pretty awesome mix of people I mean even like you know people that have won like well one of the ladies um uh Sam Briggs had like won the CrossFit World Championship so like you know like top top level people and um just yeah it was it was I was I was really excited about you know what we were going to do but each day we didn't really know what we were going to do the next day so it was kind of hard to know you know where to allocate your resources but yeah def definitely was a little worried when you see like you know people that are you know double your size and you're like huh I wonder what we're going to do <laughs> <laughs> So the first day was the obstacle race, the swim, and then the little Highland games. Um, I wouldn't say little, but yeah. <laughs> well, it was sort of the, it was sort of a, an event within an event is what I was trying to say. Like, you, you yeah. did, like, have you ever swung one of those hammers before? The Kaiser sled? Uh, never, but I would totally do that again. It was really, really fun. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a little bit of technique to it, which, um, I'd say if you'd done it before, it might've helped you a bit, but I, I mean, that's kind of like, a, you know, it, it's one of those things where, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, a little bit lighter than some of the other people. I'm not going to have as much power behind, <laughs> behind my swings. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so I, I think I need to just swing, <laughs> swing it as fast as I could and. Uh, having having a little bit of chance to practice on that might have helped, but I don't think it really would have mattered that much. Well, it looked like everybody was cheering everybody on, regardless, right? Like for the videos oh, for sure, man. That was the best part. Yeah, th that was the best part. I mean, like you know, everybody's you know battling and competing, but yeah, everybody at the end of the day wanted to see everyone else do well and. I think that's the cool part about an event like this is you get a chance to really hang out and meet everyone. And yeah, you're, you're trying to win, but uh, you're also, you know, wanting the other person to, you know, put their best effort forward. And, um, and so, yeah, it was, it was, um, I don't know. Yeah. We were, we were super into it. Like it, it seemed like a, you know, a big, like um, uh love fest really like every everybody was a and and i really i think that's the goal is part about this is because everyone's blown away by everyone else they're like what you can lift like a million pounds and they're like what you can run like a hundred miles and then you know what you were in the olympics and so like i i think that's the coolest part about these things is like yeah someone's gonna win but the coolest part is you get to make like you know 20 or 40 it's actually like because you meet the 
you know, all the other competitors, but you also get to meet the staff and the people that are like running the events. And so, you know, some of those guys up there, you know, have been um, part, of, part of that culture for a long time. So, you know, you get a chance to like really connect with them and you may have only ever seen them in a race and been like, hey, what's up? And, you know, when you get to spend four days with somebody, you get a real chance to um, learn who they are and, you know, what they're about. And I think that was, for me, one of the greatest parts of it. How competitive are you when it's events you're not as good at? Do you still just like, all right, well, I'm going to just crush this the best <laughs> I can? Uh, unfortunately, yes. Uh, even if it's like completely hopeless, I'm like, yeah, I'm going for it. You know, if, uh, if I had to, to you know, I, I got lucky. I didn't have to, uh, you may have seen they had some wrestling. I didn't have to go against like the NFL guy or um or hunter Hunter. yeah exactly (laughs) or you know even like faith i think would have like destroyed me um but yeah so like but i spent like the whole night like i was on youtube the whole night like researching wrestling moves and like like practicing and then of course like it never worked i got my ass kicked in like two seconds and like um you know that was just um you know just you know I, I hadn't done a lot of wrestling and so yeah it was it was fun to try but um you know there was people that had a lot more skill than I did all right so the second day um was the the first DECA event and then five hours of biking and you know as an endurance athlete did you did you think that you could apply, you know, running skills at least to being on a bike for five hours? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've done some really long bike rides, like, you know, ridden centuries before, but I haven't done like that long ever on a bike, especially on technical terrain. So mm, I was just trying to not crash the first loop. So it was kind of loops that we did for five hours. And so they were about nine mile loops. So the first loop I I walked a lot of it and um, especially if it got like super like off-roady technical. And so the second loop, I rode the whole thing and really kind of got in my flow and everything. And then the third loop, I, I felt like I was doing pretty good. And, um, you know, I, I felt like uh, each loop I got better and better. And so like, that's kind of what I wanted to do is just kind of, you know, keep improving, getting my skills better. And it was the first time I'd ever ridden like the, the bike that I was on. So I, I spent a lot of time like learning like the intricacies of like shifting, when to shift, when not to shift. Don't hit this stump because it's gonna knock you off your seat, you know, that kind of stuff. And so like, I think I'll feel like my bike handling got a lot better. And um, yeah, I, I definitely was um, happy with, you know, how I progressed, you know, it would have been, um, it would have been cool to be a little bit more skilled at the beginning, but you know, that for me, that was a big improvement. So, yeah. And I heard you had to bring your own bike. Uh, actually, yeah. Well, you could either rent a bike or bring a bike. So I actually got lucky. My buddy, Tom just bought like a super pimp, uh, mountain bike. And he just said like, Hey, you should borrow it. And I was like, no, I don't need it. And then of course he was like, no, you should take it. And so I did. And uh i'm so glad i did because it was so nice and i would have never made it like i would have blown so many tires without like a really nice bike so yeah it was it was awesome yeah it seems like the only person because i've heard a similar from other athletes like josiah is like the only person who probably had really done this before uh well i I think ryan um well i sorry i guess yeah ryan (laughs) it was like a world champion i guess ryan too sorry i guess ryan is pretty good on the bike (laughs) sorry forgot about forgot about ryan and Rhea had been Rhea has been riding a bit of a bike lately too um but a lot of people were like yeah i was trying to figure out how to shift gears yeah yeah totally i mean i think there was a lot of different um skill levels and um i think aaron's actually pretty skilled on the bike too um yeah I guess and so. and and some of the ladies were really quite quite good um like my our, my teammate Kellen she had never ridden before but she was super strong like she um yeah she was fearless but she crashed like t- 28 <laughs> times like yeah and like some of the people like came back and their helmets were like hanging off their head and stuff but uh I think we all had a blast and it was so funny I think if they would have been 
selling bikes at the end of the mountain bike, they probably would have had a bunch of people that would have snapped them up because um, we all really enjoyed it. All right. So on the next day, you finally got to run. Uh, and when they tell you, I guess they tell you the night before, are you like, all right, thank God, like something I've, I've at least practiced. Hell yeah, dude. I was so pumped. I wanted them to run us at like midnight in the dark. But yeah, no, but they, they made us do something beforehand. Um, Wrestling. Yes, yes. Um, but also like, uh, I'd say by the point, the time I got to, to the, the run, I was pretty, pretty tired. So uh, I was excited about, I was excited about the run just to like, you know, know what I'm doing. And uh, but it was also, you know, I was, I was, I was definitely feeling it a little bit. What do you do in the evenings for, you know, I know that you're used to doing a lot of stuff, um, a lot of back-to-back -back weekends, a lot of back-to-back -back events. What do you do to recover in the evenings or even after you finish? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think, I mean, we had pretty tight quarters, so we were all staying kind of together because we had already, uh, I think you probably know, like we did, we all did COVID testing before we got there and then we did rapid testing when we were there. So, you know, it was, it was awesome to like, be an environment where you know everyone's you know on the same um you know safety wise and i'd say you know most people were uh rolling or stretching um a lot of people were using the boots so um, what do you do i'm asking what you do yeah i mean i'd say for me i was just trying to eat <laughs> i was trying to trying to eat and rest i'm mean, not good at sleeping um so you know i was tr i was trying to do some stretching but i didn't do a ton like um, just because I knew like, you know, you're going to spend a couple of miles getting warmed up in the run. And, um, so for me, it was more about just getting as much rest as I could, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't do a lot of like great recovery. And I, I think if I went back on it again, I probably would have been more aggressive on, on trying to, on trying to recover, but I feel like everything kind of worked together. So like, I wasn't really feeling too like tight or anything like that i was just kind of spent which do you, i don't know do you travel that makes sense do you travel with a theragon or boots or anything like that yeah yeah i had like a hyper vice and i had like lacrosse ball um and you know sometimes i'll carry like a foam roller and stuff um i feel like there were so many around you could have just used one but um yeah i just did some light stretching that kind of stuff and then just some easy walking just it's you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward, man. Just get your, get your um, legs up, keep eating, keep drinking, and then get ready. But you also don't know what's coming right until the day before. So it's not like, it's not like you, you know, have an idea of like, okay, I need to make sure my arms are ready or whatever. You've, I know you've been in the Spartan orbit. You've been in Joe DeSena's orbit for a bit. I, you know, met you initially on the cruise many years ago. So how, yep. su how surprised were you early on when Joe was like, Hey, why don't we go, uh, move some rocks on this mountain? <laughs> Actually, no, I was expecting stuff like that. Actually, I thought there'd be a lot more of that kind of stuff. Um, so I, I wasn't really a big deal. Um, yeah, I mean, I figure that just kind of stuff happens, man. And, you know, that was, um, it was kind of fun. Like we, like I feel like the, a lot of that place um, is so beautiful and a lot of it's been built by people over the years and you know if we can contribute a little bit to that um, there's a couple of rocks next time I get to go that I, I'll be like oh that was one of the rocks I picked up right <laughs> uh, what, what do you think your favorite event was um I'd say I mean the trail run um, the trail run for me was, was pretty beautiful. I just thought that the, um, the foliage was spectacular. Like I, I was just blown away by how pretty it was. Um, I'd say for me, like I was really, I was really like, I wasn't awesome at it, but I was really, uh, surprised at, that I was able to finish the deck of fit the first, the first one. Like I was like, I was pretty proud of myself. Like that was, pretty hard for me and um you know I've just started doing some like functional fitness cross fitty type stuff as of like March of this year so like um 
I feel like I've been getting stronger, but I'm definitely not, you know, in the same caliber level as some of the other people there. And uh, the weights are really not scaled <laughs> for, um, you know, people <laughs> based on body type. It's just kind of like the weights, the weight. And so like, um, you know, I looked at some of those things and I'd never picked up those weights of that level before. And just to be able to get through it. Um, yeah, that was a big deal for me. Um, and so I don't know if that was a favorite event, but it was, I was, a, I was really proud of that event. And then what about the second one, which, uh, Rhea called Deca strong, stronger. <laughs> that one. Yeah. Uh, so as I said, the Deca fit was pretty heavy for me. The Deca strong or Deca heavy was, <laughs> was, was a lot more than, than I probably should have taken on. And the cool thing was they, they, you know, they said like, Hey, if you want to skip it, you know, you just get a time penalty or whatever. And so, um, you know, there were probably some more of those that I should have skipped, uh, had I, you know, not been caught up in, um, in, you know, trying to see if I could do it or not, but, um, but I didn't. And, you know, that's just, part, <laughs> that's just part of getting caught up in, you know, in an event and you know i i definitely um i definitely was impressed with the way that you know people can move that much weight and to do it fast and safe and and uh i was inspired by like the other people like i i definitely think it would be fun to you know get to the point where um you know it doesn't look so intimidating yeah watching people do you know like 50 wall balls unbroken and crazy shit like that you're like it's just it's mind-boggling yeah well or just picking up 100 pound uh dumbbells in each hand and walking them uh like or uh 100 pound 100 pound dead ball over a four foot wall and just like flipping it back and forth and making it look like they're playing like tennis <laughs> and, and i'm like uh, uh, uh trying to get it over you know um but i was surprised man i didn't even think i could pick it up so you know i i did and you know i probably shouldn't know because you know now i'm on my knees talking to you but um you know that's just that's just part of it thank you so much and you can get the rest of this conversation on our podcast which i will link below uh we talked for a little bit longer after this to talk about uh what he's been up to before this and what's going to go on after this and we'll also be including another athlete on that podcast you'll have to check it out to see thanks as always for watching love you miss you mean it i have got to run <laughs>